Greetings, minions. Pibbling Z here. I hope everything is well with you. Everything is just fine and friggin' dandy with me. Um, today, I'm going to answer some more of your questions that you asked, and hopefully you'll have more questions, and if you do, just drop them in the comments below, and I'll get to them probably next week. But today is kind of special because today I'm actually going to give away the very first prize that I've given away on this channel. So at the end of the video, um, you guys feel free to, to leave lots of comments and of course subscribe and like and share and ring that bell for notifications. But when you leave a comment, I'm gonna go ahead and enter you into the contest. And the prize will be... an autographed copy of my latest book, Madness. Ooh, shiny. It's actually quite matte, but still amazing. Anyway, I have a few questions to answer today, so let's get to it. RikerGray997 says, I know the costs are high, though I don't know how the cost is decided, but is it better to go through a publishing agency than to try to publish the book yourself? You're going to hear many different opinions on this. Myself and others really push the idea of traditionally published. That is, is very important to me because I feel that you get a bigger audience that way, you get bigger support that way. Some people like to be in more control of their book and what happens to it. But the thing that I hang on is this. I have one job and that one job is to write a book. I have editors, I have sales and marketing people, I have tons of people to do all of their jobs. It takes hundreds and hundreds of people to make one book work. I don't want to do the job of hundreds and hundreds of people. Therefore, I'm traditionally published. Does that mean I'm completely against self-publishing? I guess it depends on the circumstances, but I would say no. But again, that's up to you. What do you want to do? Remember, money always flows to the author when you are traditionally published. So something to think about. S. Hubert asks, how do you feel about writing events like National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo? Okay, NaNoWriMo, I think, is an absolutely wonderful thing to do. It gives a lot of people a big push where you have, if you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, you basically have 30 days to write 30,000 words or something like that, and it pushes a lot of people to get a huge chunk of their books in. If you're writing YA, and generally YA starts around, around 60,000 words, that can give you half of a book in a month. Is it gonna be good? Uh, it's gonna be really, really rough, but rough can be fixed. So I absolutely support these things. I think they're wonderful. They also ask, in your writing process, do you set daily goals for yourself? The fact is I do set daily goals for myself. Otherwise, I will be writing into the wind and not really accomplishing anything I've set out to accomplish. I found that I am a very goal-oriented person and that's how I hit the end, which of course is the most important thing that you can do when you're writing a book or a story or whatever. So personally, I'll set a goal of like 500 words, 1,000 words, 3,000 words, no matter what that is that I want to accomplish or have to by a deadline, and I stick to it. Whether it takes me an hour to do my work or it takes me 10 hours, I stick to that and get the work done. Brittany Lane asks, when working on a book, do you ever get ideas for a different book or story, and what do you do for that? Well, it's funny you should ask that. I generally refer to that as shiny new idea syndrome, and every writer I've ever known gets it where you're in the middle of a book, you're invested in the middle of a story, and you're writing and you're writing, and all of a sudden, shiny new idea comes whispering in your ear. And it's difficult, it's difficult to resist shiny new idea because it's shiny and new, which is kind of why it's called shiny new idea syndrome. Anyway, when I get that, I generally jot down ideas, whether it's on the computer or in a physical notebook, I give myself a couple of sentences, write it down, put it away for later, and tell myself I'm not allowed to touch that until I finish the task at hand. Whoa, no touchy, no touchy, no touch. Because it's very important that you hit the end. And if you have a lot of beginnings, you're never gonna hit the end on one of them. So focus, get it done. It takes a lot of discipline, but it's important. Colby Gallen Williams had a couple of questions. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the one I think is most intriguing. They said, should I get my name officially changed before getting published? Now, I don't know your specific reasons for changing your name. Obviously, I'm totally in support of changing your name if you want, it's your name, go ahead. However, you don't need to wait until your name has been legally changed in order to publish a book. The fact is, whatever name that you want on the cover can be on the cover. It's called a pen name if it's not like officially your legal name. It's totally okay to do that. Authors do it all the time. So you don't have to wait for anybody to tell you that it's okay to put this name or that name on your book. So don't wait. 
Spooky Dick 666, who, by the way, has the most amazing eye makeup and has threatened that they will not teach me how to do it until I tell them what happened to Snow, asked a question too. Just wondering about what would happen to Snow and if you wanted to continue with her or make more stuff about Thomas and Otis. Um, as far as the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd goes, I absolutely have more to say about it. And I definitely want to continue to share these things with you. It really comes down to a publisher deciding that they want to continue the series with me. And should a publisher do that? It promised to give you answers about Snow's eyes. I never thought that would be really as much of a cliffhanger as it's turned out to be, and it totally is. However, I must demand that I get eye makeup tips immediately after. They also ask, also, how do you feel about the emo goth scene culture now that it's 2019? Because it was pretty big a while ago and it's present in Vlad's books, but not so much Joss's. So what do you feel about that culture nowadays? I still absolutely love that culture. I know that it has uh, quieted some over the years, but I still view myself as very much a part of that culture. And I, I think it's just a part of who I am, a part of who Vlad is, a part of so many of you. And so I refuse to say that it's been extinguished or that it's a thing of the past because the truth is that those things remain. You know, uh, I love being very in touch with my emotions. I love being very dark. And just because a certain thing has been treated as a fad doesn't necessarily mean that it was. I will always be emo. I will always be goth. It's just who I am. Besides that, I feel like there's time for a resurgence. I feel like that's gonna come back in a major way. Not that it matters, because we're just like that. Bailey R says, do you have any particular sources you use for world building? What's your process for that? I have the hardest time building my story's world. It can be very, very intimidating to build a world. You basically have to create it from the ground up. You have to create what, what type of currency they use. You have to create, you know, the boundaries of the map. You have to create all of these different things. And it can be really a challenge because building a world, you're basically being their god. That's God? What did you expect me to look like, my son? Well, not like that! And so you have to know everything. But the thing is, the easiest way to do it, for me, I've found, and everyone's mileage varies, the easiest way for me, I've found, is to sit down and ask myself questions about the world. Like that, what kind of money do they use? You know, what type of educational system there is? 90% of the stuff you know about your world will not go in the book. But if there's a magic system, you need to know exactly what that magic system is, exactly what the limitations are. Are there laws against this or that? And write those things down until you understand the world. Largely, you will come to understand it as you write the story. But world building is incredibly important, especially if you're writing fantasy. If you're writing fantasy, world building is everything. As far as resources go, I've not really look to other people to do my world building. It's mostly building those blocks where I'm asking myself these questions because I have to have those answers. So I'd suggest going to the source. Interview yourself. It's your world. You're a god. Make it happen. Watermelon Wolf, which let's just log that one away because that's a pretty awesome username, asks, I believe you are the one who started the vampire craze back in the day. Could you do that for werewolves? Minions. That's so sweet. I love that you guys think that I was the one that started the vampire craze. The truth is I have no idea who started it. Um, a lot of vampire stuff came out at the same time. And I know when I was writing Vlad, 8th Grade Bites, I didn't see any vampire stuff out. It just wasn't a thing in Kidlet, in YA. And so I wanted to write vampires and so I did. And then all of a sudden vampire books exploded and I have no idea if I was first, if I was second, if I was tenth. I'm just glad that you guys connected with it and that you seem to continue to connect with it. As far as me doing that for werewolves, I'm afraid I'm a cat person. So the answer would be no, sorry. But I would pose this question. Why aren't you writing about werewolves if you love them so much? I mean, that's why I wrote about vampires. Garen L asks, I was wondering what your routine is when you write. Do you have set hours? Do you just write when you feel like it that day? How many words do you shoot for each time you're at the keyboard? The fact is that my routine varies. If I'm under strict deadline, I will be required by myself, by my editor, to accomplish my goals in a certain time frame. Uh, the word count is up to me. Some days there's a lot of work and sometimes I'm in my office for a long, long time. When I'm kind of between projects, and it's like right now I'm between projects, it's kind of willy-nilly. It's kind of like writing when I want 
but generally when I write, what I prefer to do, because otherwise I get a little grouchy, I prefer to come into my office early on, get breakfast, come into my office, sit down, accomplish what I have to accomplish, break for lunch, come back in and finish it. The word count varies wildly. As I was saying earlier, between 500, 1,000, 3,000, it really depends on what exactly I'm trying to write. As for set hours, I generally, if I am really busy, I'm trying to get in my office for a long time to accomplish a project, I generally will start by 8 a.m. and I will finish by 3 p.m. That's just a personal choice because I really want the rest of that time to be with my husband and my kitties. Orlando says has an interesting situation that I'm sure a lot of people end up in. You see, they're about to turn 30. Happy birthday! And don't say, yikes, 30 isn't bad at all. I'm 46 and look at me. I'm amazing. 30's fantastic. So just grab that tail and roll with it. They say that the ideas are there for the most part, but between work, school, and my depression, it's very tough to get motivated to continue writing. I set a goal for myself that for my 30s, I want to have this book finished and possibly published or at least accepted by a publisher by the end of my 30s. That gives me 10 years to work with. I guess my question is, what are some ways that I can help myself get back into the swing of things? Um, it can be difficult if you're finding uh, personal things getting in the way of writing. Uh, personally, for me, I understand depression and I understand how it can really crush your creative motivation. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I wrote Madness, I was uh, actually uh, deep in the midst of a depression and it was a, a way to kind of deal with those feelings. So for me, whenever I'm, I'm having issues, I try to turn to writing as a, a, an avenue to, to kind of cleanse myself of those things, to get it up and out of me and onto the page and somewhere where maybe I can understand it a bit better. So you might want to try using it as a vehicle, even though I know it can be very difficult when you're depressed to, to get up and sit at a desk or sit with your laptop and get the words out. It can be a huge challenge because sometimes when you're depressed, you feel like doing nothing. Now, if you're not dealing with depression and it's just work, you have to treat writing like a job if you wanna get anywhere, which means you have to have set hours or at least a set word count that you're like, look, to every day I can get 50 words on the page. Then get 50 words on the page. And if that becomes easier, then go, okay, now every day I want a hundred words on the page and work hard to get those hundred words. Build it up. Stop looking at that end goal and that limitation when it comes to, in my 30s, this has to be done. It doesn't have to. There are many authors that don't start writing or publishing until they're in their 60s. Age isn't important. What's important is that you are coming to the page again and again. You will reach the end if you make it a goal. So make it a goal. Fight for it one word at a time. Anyway, that's about it for me. I'm happy to answer you guys' questions. And if you have more questions, please just leave them in the comments because I love hearing from you guys and I love having these moments where I can directly interact with you, answer whatever questions it is you have. And I honestly don't care what they're about. If they're about writing, awesome. If they're about my kiddies, whatever, so good. I am willing to talk about pretty much anything because I'm an open book. So now get to commenting and enter this contest. I will let it go until the next time I post a video, and then I'll announce the next winner. So that'll do it. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Share with your friends, because the Minion Horde could always use more members. Anyway, that's all for me, Minions. Talk to you next time. Love you.